Hey there, homesteaders. It's a really cold and snowy day here in the desert. And today we decided we're going to try out some water bath canning. And to try to counteract some of this cold, we're going to be canning jalapenos so we can get nice and spicy. <laughs> so let's go ahead and just jump right in. Let's go. Hey! We're Kaliki and Brett, a rugged and adventurous gay couple who are sick and tired of clashing with life in the city. So we decided to head into the desert to chase our dreams and thrive. Along with our furry friends Chuck and Momo, we'll explore DIY projects, tiny house construction, gardening, hiking, cooking, and share what it looks like to jump headfirst into homesteading. So subscribe and join us on our dusty adventures to build this desert dwelling. So I know a lot of people are having a hard time finding these jars, but we lucked out and found some of these at Safeway recently, so we are able to do this episode for you and show you what happens when you can things and you have no idea what you're doing. Oh god, what? There's a spider in here. Oh. Throw him outside. He just wants to be warm, but not on my face tonight. Uh, he's coming back he's, in. He's under the welcome mat. Canceled. So my wonderful friend Rachel bought me this awesome jar handler for my birthday, as well as this pot that we're going to be canning in today. Hopefully it works. She said that there were some reports that sometimes these pots just melt. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open this up while the water's cool, and I'm going to put the jars that we want to use today in there so they can heat up and the lids. I don't want it to be totally boiling, I just want it to be warm enough that it will boil pretty quickly once we're ready to put the jars in there and process them. And I'm going to put this part of the lid, but you don't need to put the ring in there at all. You can just keep these on the ground if you want to. <laughs> I know I act like I know what I'm doing totally, but really I just read about this from a lot of different sites and just wrote it down. I'm trying to remember what's happening and hopefully I do it right. I think this part is just to warm up the jars so you're not pouring hot liquid from cold jars and probably to like help sterilize them and clean them up a bit. These are brand new though, so I think they're probably pretty clean. And I can fit eight of these jars in here nicely, so they're not going to be rattling around on each other. I don't want anything to break in there. So that would be a pain. And you don't really want to store these on the ground. All right, so I'll just let those keep warming up with the water and let Brett do his magic. Oh, hi, Giselle. Come on in. So I'm just going to start by chopping up all these jalapenos into little slices. So while he's working on chopping those, I'm going to work on making a vinegar brine for the jalapenos and heating that up. To make this brine, you're supposed to use a certain ratio, and it is 3 to 1, 3 parts vinegar to 1 part water. I think that should be enough for the amount of jalapenos we have, 3 cups of vinegar and 1 cup of water, so I'm going to go ahead and mix that up and get it on the stove. So that's all you need to put in there for a brine. Some people like to put sugar, salt, and other things in there. We're just going to put some salt in there. Come back. 
hammer salt, you think we should put in kitchen man? I think two tablespoons is probably good. Alright, so two tablespoons in there with the vinegar and water. We're using pink Himalayan salt. You could use any kind of salt you wanted. Some people like to use tickling salt, and I've read that that just helps to make the liquid not as cloudy after it sits there for a while. So far, so good. Nothing seems too crazy. I think we're right on track to make this happen. There's little bubbles forming in there. It's definitely starting to heat up nicely. Normally we would do all this stuff outside, but since the high today is about 45 degrees and the low is going to be about 17 tonight, we brought everything indoors. Have a nice cozy cooking day on the inside. What if they're spicy jalapenos? Uh, probably some of them. Ugh. They're spicy. Now I'm going to break up some garlic cloves. I'll put a couple garlic cloves just whole in each one of the jars at the bottom. They're being so weird, the chickens. What are they doing? They're like under the tree and Titsy's staring Special down, and Special's got her head cocked to the side and like pulled back all weird. And then they're making like a weird purring sound. It's weird. And they're like solidly just like frozen, staring at each other. It sounds like, <laughs> but like not that loud. There's a predator somewhere, there's a hawk or something trying know. to get them. They're eyeballing each other like they're mad. Ugh. Does anybody else hate when garlic papers just stick all over your hands? Ugh. I'm just gonna lightly press my knife on these. Usually I'm just chopping the garlic up, but I want the cloves to stay whole this time, so I'm just trying not to like totally crush it. But it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. Down to the racetrack, bet on the ponies. <laughs> My money's on cross-eyed debutante. Anybody catch that election? Ooh wee, what a nail biter! <laughs> things are looking good, things are heating up, things are getting processed, we're gonna make this happen! Tiny house living, it's wild and it's free. Tiny house living for you and for me. Yeah, that's our new jingle. Yeah, yeah, it's a creation. Quick creations with Brett and Kaliki. Smells like vinegar makes me real happy. You could have rhymed my name with Stinky. Oh, Smell that vinegar, it's so stinky. It's kitchen time with bread and kaliki. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm glad we got it on film. Alright, so I'm not sure when the recording stopped, but I've got all my garlic chopped. And I did this to the camera, and then I realized it wasn't recording anymore. So, we'll find out. Now I have an onion. Cut that end off. Cut that end off. Cut it in half. And then peel off the outer layer. So my phone had stopped recording again. But I cut the onions. And I've got the garlic. And I got the jalapenos. So everything is ready to fill the jars once they are sterilized, which they are just about there. And we'll be able to get this pickle show going. 
So both of these seem pretty hot now. I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on the vinegar because I want it to boil a little bit, but I don't want it to evaporate that much. And I think the jars are pretty much ready. I turned them down a little bit because I don't want it to boil while they're in there. I just want it to heat up and let them sit in there for a little while. And again, this is the first time we've done this, so insert, I think, in front of everything I say. So just real quick, a couple things you're going to need before we do this step. You need a ladle to get the brine into the jars. You're going to want a chopstick or something like this to go in and poke all the air bubbles out once you fill it with the brine. Some people have a little magnetic thing that will get the lids out of the water, but I don't. So I'm going to use these tongs. I've also seen people have like a little tool that measures headspace and does all those things. But again, I don't have that. And then you're also going to want a rag or a paper towel so you can wipe the rims of the jars off after you're done filling them. Also, a funnel would be great to do this, but that's another thing that we overlooked. So we're just going to go for it. So I'm going to go ahead and just get these out of here. Be really careful not to burn yourself when you're pouring this water out. I know some people use their dishwashers to do this, but that's not a luxury that we have in this tiny, tiny home of ours. Alright, so I'm just going to start by putting a couple cloves of garlic, a couple peppercorns, some onion. And I read that you want to pack them in tight, but not too tight, you don't need to like smash them and bruise them or anything, but just so you can fill up as much space as possible. Processing them is going to make them shrink down and change color too, so a lot of the times I've seen there's a little bit of space at the bottom of people's jars. One thing I forgot to mention is that you want to leave a half an inch of headspace when you're pickling these, so with these jars, it's basically just the little rim that the jar ring fits on. So you can use any kind of peppers you want. They can be store-bought, they can be homegrown, but you just want to make sure they're not really bruised or anything, because that can make your batch spoil, I think. Man, it's not even gonna fill up both of these jars. I wonder, is it okay if you have more headspace? You know, I don't know. I think so. You just want to make sure that the brine is completely submerging everything in the jar. Yeah, this is... I wonder if you could just pack that into these other jars. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try to do that. that sounds good. Let's just dump this stuff out. Alright, so those are filled. I'm going to go ahead and... I was going to use a ladle, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just pour it over directly out of the pot. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. Oh, that might be a little too full. I don't think that this is at all going to be enough brine. We shall see. This isn't even going to be enough to do one other jar. Okay, well, make sure you're making enough brine for what you're doing, because we did not. So you want to just get something like a chopstick, like I said, and go in and poke all the air bubbles out. Okay, well, we are learning along with you, and we're only processing four jars. But whatever. We'll definitely use all these jalapenos. We can make something sooner than later. And these ones will last for up to 18 months, I've read, hopefully. So then you want to make sure you wipe these lids clean so that the lid can get a good seal on there. How was that little onion out of there? It was really good. Which is crazy, just a second in that brine, and it was already like <laughs> tasty. Little, 
a spicy pickled onion. All right, so we've got those four. We'll go in here. Ah, yeah, so hot. Make good choices. Put this over here. I've got way too many lids inside of this, unfortunately, but you want to put that on there. And as I do that, you want to put rings on there. You don't want to make them really tight or over tight. You just want them to be what they call finger tight. So just a tiny bit more, I think, than what your hand just naturally does. Then, if you've got one of these, you'll take this, just set your jar inside. And there is a rack at the bottom of here, at the bottom of this pot, because you don't want your pots, <clears throat> you don't want your jars just rattling around on the bottom, and I think the heat could get a little wild that way. And then you want to make sure that they're completely submerged. And then you turn it up, you want the water to boil, and once it starts boiling, that's when you start the timer. And it's always good to clean up after yourself while you're doing things in the kitchen and you've got a little time just to straighten up, put things away, make it nice, keep it nice. We've got some bubbles slowly starting to rise in there, so it should be almost ready to start timing. It's never gonna boil, cause I just keep looking. So since we didn't have enough vinegar to do anything with these, we're gonna make a salt brine, and then we're just gonna weight them, and then ferment them to preserve it. So we'll have to put it in this jar because the weights, the fermenting weights that we have won't fit into these standard mouth mason jars, so but that'll work out nicely. It's one teaspoon per one cup of water for the brine that we're making. So we're just going to try to shove all those in this jar here and then weight it down and leave it out for a few weeks. I did a quart of water. It might be more than I need, but I don't want to not have enough when I'm doing this, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm using the same pink Himalayan salt. And since I'm using a quart, that is four teaspoons. And I'm just going to heat that up to dissolve the salt. I didn't really heat the water up all that much, because I don't want to have to wait for it to cool down forever. I want to... Like, boiling water on these would kill a lot of the good bacteria that are on it that you want for the fermentation to happen. Yeah. So, I'm just going to do that now. Just fill them up. You don't want to put too much liquid when you're fermenting things like this because the jalapenos themselves are going to get a bunch of liquid coming out of it once you weight them all down. So these canning weights, or fermentation weights and lids we have. You can see them in the camera, and I can put them on the thing. <laughs> just put that on, press it down, just push the weight down. Oh, that's probably a little bit too much liquid because that's going to come out of the top. We've definitely fermented stuff before and then as it's going it just starts leaking brine everywhere. I'm just gonna pump out the air from this. So there was too much water in there, it came out of the top, but that should still be fine. Alright, now these will sit for a week or two, just depending on how fast it ferments. We'll just kind of judge by the smell and the appearance of the jalapenos. Once they look, the color will change and it'll start to smell sour and fermented. So I'm just going to sit these over in the other room. Alright, so we have this up to a boil now, and I'm going to set the timer. We're setting the timer for 15 minutes because we are at a higher elevation. Normally, if you're below a thousand feet elevation, you would do it for 10 minutes, but 
1,000 to about 6,000 feet elevation, I think, is 15, and anything above that is 20 minutes. 15 minutes, and now we'll relax. So one thing we really like to do while we're relaxing is watch our good friend Christine and her channel on YouTube, Cosmos with Christine. We'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out, too. Another episode <laughs> of Cosmos with Christine. On today's show, we will be discussing all things self care, self love, and self compassion. Why? Mm. Well, because that's what today's show is about, of course. Thanks for tuning in. All right, well, that was a nice, relaxing little time with Christine. The timer has gone off, and it's time to remove the jars. I'm just going to turn off the heat. Maybe let that calm down for just a second and get something to remove the lid with. Let's see how they look. Moving and grooving. So I just get my can lifter again. Oh, look at that. It's definitely got that space at the bottom like I've seen in some other videos. They look good. Get that water off of there. Alright. And then you just want to leave those to rest undisturbed for 12 to 24 hours until the seals on the top suck in and seal. And you will either hear them or you'll just be able to tell after that time if you push on it, it won't move or anything. If they don't seal, then I've heard that you can go ahead and re-can them, but we're new to this. I don't really want to try that out. I think we'll probably just eat them if that ends up happening. So that's all the canning stuff we're going to be doing for today. We will let everything rest, clean up, and check in with you again tomorrow. Well, we checked our jars this morning, and all four of them actually did seal. I was really skeptical that that wasn't going to happen, but I went and pressed on all of them, and they're all down for sure. I only heard two of them pop, and they popped pretty quickly after we were done and letting them rest. And then we have this other jar of the jalapenos that are fermenting. They're that nice, crisp color, so nice. And those will sit for probably like two weeks at least since it's so cold. Yeah. So today we don't have anything fun to crunch on and eat for you, but we'll be eating these eventually and I'm super excited. Yeah. I'm excited to eat them. I love jalapenos. Yeah. I like food. I like food, too. I definitely learned a lot of things, especially that you want to make sure you're making enough brine for the project that you're trying to can. <laughs> yeah. But we're pretty resourceful. We make things happen. And we got all those jalapenos ready to preserve. And even though we only got four cans processed today, I'm excited to have another tool in my tool belt and more that we can do here on the homestead. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next episode of Desert Dwelling. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye!